to justice, or that part of which it is commonly executive, answers the education of the inns of court or chancery, upon which to philosophize requires a peculiar kind of learning that I have not. But they who take upon them any profession proper unto the educations mentioned, that is, theology, physic, law, or are not at leisure for the essays. Wherefore, the essays mean degrees whereby the youth commence for all magistracies, offices, and honors in the parish, hundred, tribe, senate, or prerogative, divines, physicians, and lawyers, not taking these degrees, exclude themselves from all such magistrate, magistracies, offices, and honors. And whereas lawyers are likely are likest to exact farthest upon, farthest reason for the, for this, they growing up from the most gainful art at the bar unto those magistracies upon the bench, which are continually appropriated to themselves and not only endowed by the greatest revenues but held for life have the least reason of all the rest to pretend unto any other, especially in an equal commonwealth where accumulation of magistracy, or to that of a person engaged by his profit unto the laws as they stand into the power which is legislative, and should keep them unto what they were or ought to be were a solecism in prudence. It is true that the legislative power may have need of advice or assistance from, an, from the executive magistracy or such as are learned in the law, for such cause the judges are, as they have hitherto been, assistants in the Senate. Nor, however it came about, can I see any reason why a judge being but an assistant, a lawyer, should be a member of a legislative council. I deny not that the Roman patricians were all patrons and the whole people were clients, some unto one family and some unto another, by which means they had their causes pleaded and defended in some appearance gratis. For the patron took no money, though if he had a daughter to marry, his clients were to pay her portion nor was this so much. But if the client accused his patron, gave testimony or suffrage against him, it was a crime of such nature that any man might lawfully kill him as a traitor, and this, as being a nerve of the optimacy, was a great cause of ruin unto that commonwealth. For when the people would carry anything that pleased not the Senate, the senators were ill provided, if they could not intercede, that is, oppose it by their clients, with whom to vote otherwise than they pleased was so high a crime. The observation of this bond till the time of the Gracchi, that is to say, till it was too late, or to no purpose to break it, was the cause why in all the former hearts and disputes that had happened between the Senate and the people, it never came to blows, which was good, but withal the people could have no remedy, which was evil. Wherefore, I am of opinion that a senator ought not to be a patron or advocate, nor a patron or advocate to be a senator. For if this practice be gratis, it debaucheth the people." and if it be mercenary, it debaucheth himself. Take it which way you will. When he should be making of laws, he will be knitting of nets. Lycurgus, as I said, by being a traveler, became a legislator. But in times when prudence was another thing. Nevertheless, we may not shut out this part of education. In a commonwealth, which will by which will be herself a traveller, for which of this make for which of this make have seen the world, especially because this, though it be not regarded in our times when things being left to 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 take their chance, it fares with us accordingly, is certain 
No man can be a politician except he be first an historian or a traveler, for except he can see what must be or what may be, he is no politician. Now, if he have no knowledge in story, he cannot tell what hath been, and if he hath not been a traveler, he cannot tell what is. But he that neither knoweth what hath been nor what is can never tell what must be or what may be. Furthermore, the embassies in ordinary by our constitution are the prizes of young men, more especially such as have been travelers. Wherefore, they of these inclinations, having leave of the censors, owe them account of their time, and cannot choose but lay it out with some ambition of praise or reward, with both, where both are open, whence you will have eyes abroad and better choice of public ministers, your gallants showing themselves not more unto the ladies at their balls, than unto the, your commonwealth at her academy, when they return from their travels. But this commonwealth, being constituted more especially of two elements, arms and councils, driveth by a natural instinct at courage and wisdom, which he who hath attained is arrived at the perfection of human nature. It is true that these virtues must have some natural root in him that is capable of them, but this amounteth not unto so great a matter as some will have it, for if poverty make an industrious, a moderate estate, a temperate, and a lavish fortune, a wanton man, and this be the common course of things, wisdom is rather of necessity than inclination. And that an army which was meditating upon flight hath been brought by despair to win the field, is so far from being strange that like causes will evermore produce like effects. Wherefore this commonwealth driveth, out, driveth her citizens like wedges. There is no way with them but through, nor end but that glory whereof may is, man is capable by art or nature, that the genius of the Roman families preserved itself through the line, as to instance in some, that the manlii were still severe, the publicole lovers, and the api haters of the people, is attributed by Machiavel unto their education, nor if interest might add unto the reason why the, re why the genius of a patrician was one thing, and that of a plebeian another, is the like so apparent between different nations, who according unto their different educations, have yet as different manners. It was anciently noted, and long confirmed by the French, that in their first assaults their courage was more than that of men, and for the rest less than that of women, which nevertheless through the amendment of their discipline we see to be otherwise. I will not say but that some man or nation upon equal improvement of this kind may be lighter than some other, but certainly education is the scale without which no man or nation can truly know his or her own weight or value. By our histories we can tell when one Mar Marpesian would have beaten ten Oceaners, and when one Oceaner would have beaten ten Marpesians. Mark Antony was a Roman, but how did that... But how did that appear in the embraces of Cleopatra? You must have some other education for your youth, or they, like that passage, will show better in romance than true story. The custom of the commonwealth of Rome in distributing her magistracies without respect of age happened to do well in uh, Corvinus and Scipio, for which cause Machiavel with whom that which was done by Rome, and that which is well done, is for the most part all one, commendeth this course. Yet how much it did work at other times is obvious in Pompey and Caesar, examples by which Boccalini uh, illustrateth 
the prudence of Venice in her contrary practice, affirming it to have been no small step unto the ruin of Roman liberty, that these, having tasted in, your, in their youth of the supreme honors, had no greater in their age to hope for, but by perpetuating of the same in themselves which came to blood and ended in tyranny. The opinion of Verulamius is safe. The errors, saith he, of young men are the ruin of business, whereas the errors of aged men amount but to this, that more might have been done or sooner. But though their wisdom be little, their courage is great. Wherefore, to come unto the main education of this commonwealth, the militia of Oceana is the province of youth. The distribution of this province by the essays is so fully described in the order that I need repeat nothing, the order itself being but a repetition or copy of that original which in ancient prudence is, of all other, the fairest, as that from whence the commonwealth of Rome more especially derived the empire of the world. And there is much more reason in this age than governments are universally broken or, or swerved from their foundations, and the people groan under tyranny, that the same causes which could not be withstood when the world was full of popular governments would have the like effect. The causes of the commonwealth of Rome, wherefore, or whereof the empire of the world was not any miraculous, but a natural, nay, I may safely say, necessary consequence, are contained in that part of her discipline which was domestic, and in that which she exercised in her provinces or conquests. Of the latter, I shall say better. I shall have better occasion to speak when we have when we come unto our provincial orbs. The former divided the whole people by tribes, amounting as Livy shows, at their full growth unto thirty-five, and every tribe, by the sense, or valuation of estates, unto five classes, for the sixth being proletary that is, the nursery, or such as through their poverty contributed nothing to the commonwealth but children, was not reckoned nor used in arms. And this is the first point in the militia, in which modern prudence is quite contrary unto the ancient. For whereas we, excusing the rich and arming the poor, became the vassals of our servants, they, by excusing the poor and arming such as were rich enough to be freemen, became lords of the earth. The nobility and gentry of this nation, who understand so little that it is to be lords of the earth, that they have not been able to keep their lands, will think it a strange education for their children to be common soldiers and obliged unto all the duties of arms. Nevertheless, it is not for, it is not for four shillings a week that to be capable of being the best man in the field if or in the city, the latter part of which cons consideration makes the common soldier in this a better man than the general of any monarchical army. And whereas it may be thought that this would drink deep of noble blood, I dare, bold say, I dare boldly say, take the Roman nobility in the heat of their fiercest wars, and you shall not find such a shambles of them, as hath been made of our of ours by mere luxury and slothfulness, which killing the body animasque in vulnere ponunt, kill the soul also, whereas common right is that which who stands in the vindication of hath used that sword of justice for which he receiveth the purple of magistracy. The glory of a man on earth can go no higher, and he, and if he fall, he riseth, and comes sooner unto that reward which is so much higher as heaven is above earth. To return unto the Roman example, every classis was divided, as hath been more than once shown, into centuries, and every century was equally divided into youth and elders, and youth for foreign service, and the elders for the guard of the territory. In the first classes, 
were a matter of eighteen centuries of horse, being those which by the institution of Servius were first called unto the suffrage Cinturiatis. But the delectus, or levy of an army, which is the present business, proceeded according to Polybius in this manner. Upon a war decreed, the consuls elected four and twenty military tribunes or colonels, whereof ten, being such as had merited their tenth stipend, were young officers. The tribunes being chosen, the consuls appointed the day unto the tribes when, the, when those in them of military age were to appear at the capital. The day being come, and the youth assembled accordingly, the consuls ascended their tribunal, and the younger tribunes were forthwith divided into four parts after this manner. Four were assigned unto the first legion, a legion at the most consisted of six thousand foot and three thousand horse. Three unto the second, four unto the third, and three unto the fourth. The younger tribunes were thus distributed. Two of the elder were assigned unto the first legion, three unto the second, two unto the third, and three unto the fourth. And the officers of each legion thus assigned, having drawn the tribes by lots, and being seated according unto their divisions at a convenient distance from each other, the tribe of the first lot was called, whereupon they that were of it, knowing the business and being prepared, presently bolted out four of their number, in the choice whereof such care was taken that they offered none that was not a citizen, no citizen that was not of the youth, no youth that was not of some one of the five classes nor any of the five class nor any one of the five classes that was not expert at the his exercises moreover they used such diligence in matching them for age and stature that the officers of the legions except they happen happened to be acquainted with the youths so bolted were forced to put themselves upon fortune while they of the first legion chose one they of the second the next, they of the third another, they of the four, and the fourth youth fell to the last legion, and thus was the election. The legions and the tribes, varying according unto their lots, carried one till the foot were complete. What? This was called giving of names, which the children of Israel did also by lot, and, it, and if any man refused to give his name, he was sold for a slave, and his estate confiscated to the commonwealth. Marcus Curius, consul cum subitum, delectum ede, edecere, coactus, eset et juniorum, nemo respondisit, respondisit. Uh, Conjectis in sortem omnibus coliae. It is the name of a tribe. Que proxima exierat. Primum nomen urna extractum titari. Usit neque eo respondente bona adolescentis hasta subject. Subjetit, which was conformable unto the law in Israel, according whereunto Saul took a yoke of oxen, and hewed them in pieces, and sent them throughout the tribes, saying, Whosoever com cometh not forth unto battle after Saul and Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. By which you may observe also that they who had no cattle were not of the militia in Israel. But the age of the Roman youth, Lege Tulia, determined at thirty, and by the and by the law, though it should seem by Machiavel and others that this was not well observed, a man could not stand for magistracy till he was Miles Emerit. Emeriti, emeritus, had fulfilled the full term of his militia, which was complete in his tenth stipend or service, 
nor was he henceforth obliged under any penalty to give his name except the commonwealth were invaded in which case the elders were as well obliged as the youth quod per magnos tumultus fieri solitum erat justitio indicto delectus sine vacationibus habitus est the consul might also levy milites evocatus commanded men out of such as had served their term and this at his discretion the legions being thus complete were divided by two unto each consul and in these no man had right to serve but a roman citizen now because two legions made but a very but a small army the romans added unto every one of their armies an equal number of foot and a double number of horse levied among their latin or italian associates so a consular army with the legions and auxiliaries amounted to about thirty thousand and whereas they commonly levied two such armies together these being joined made a matter of sixty thousand the steps whereby our our militia follows the greatest captain are the three essays the first elected by a fifth man curiatis in the parishes amounting in the whole unto one hundred thousand choosing their officers centuriatis and the hundreds were where they fall also unto their games or exercises invited by handsome prizes such as for themselves and the honor of them will be coveted such as in the space of ten years will harness you thirty thousand men horse and foot with such arms for their forge proof and beauty as notwithstanding the uh, argisipedes or silver shields of alexander's guard were never worn by so many such as will present marks of virtue and direction unto your general or strategus in the distribution of his army which doubles the value of them unto the uh, proprietors who are bound to wear them and cause and, and easeth the commonwealth of so much charge so many being armed already but here will be the objection now how shall such a revenue be, com be compassed? Fifty pounds a year in every hundred is a great deal, not so easily raised. Men will, pay will not part with their money, nor would the sum, as it is proposed by the order of pomp, rise in many years. These are difficulties that fit our genius exactly, and yet a thousand pounds in each hundred once levied establisheth the revenue forever. Now the hundreds, one with another, are worth ten thousand pounds a year dry rent, over and above personal estates, which bring it unto twice the value, so a twentieth part of one year's revenue of the hundred does it. If you cannot afford this while you pay taxes, though from henceforth they will be but small small ones. Do it when you pay none, if it be then too much for one year. Do it in two. If it be too much for two years, do it in four. What husbands have we hitherto been? What is become of greater sums my lords if you should thus cast your bread upon the waters after many days you would find it stand not huckling when you are offered corn and your money again in the mouth of the sack but to proceed the first essay being officed officered at the hundreds and mustered tri tributi tribu tributis at the tribes where they are entertained with other sports which will be very fine ones proceed unto the election of the second essay or standing army of this nation consisting of thirty thousand foot and ten thousand horse and then upon a war decreed 
being delivered at the rendezvous of Oceana unto the Strategus, or the third essay, which answereth unto the Roman legions. But you may observe that whereas the consuls elected the military tribunes and raised commanded men out of the veterans at their own discretion, our polemarchs, or field officers, are elected by the scrutiny of the council of war and our veterans not otherwise taken on then as volunteers, and with the consent of the polemarchs, which may serve for the removal of certain scruples which might otherwise be uh, incident in this place, though without encouragement by the Roman way of proceeding, much less that which is proposed. But whereas the Roman legions in all amounted not in one army to about 30,000 men, or little more, you have here 40,000. And whereas they added auxiliaries, in this regard it is that Marpesia will be of greater revenue unto you than if you had the Indies, for whereas uh, heretofore she hath brought you forth nothing but her native thistle, plowing out the rankness of her aristocracy by your agrarian, you will find her an inexhaustible, inexhaustible magazine of men, and to her own advantage, who will make a far better account by the arms than by the pins of Poland. Wherefore, as a consular army consisted of about an equal number of auxiliaries added unto their legions by their Latin or Italian associates, you may add unto a parliamentary army an equal number of Marpesians or Panapeans, as that colony may hereafter be able to supply you, by which means the commonwealth will be able to go forth to battle with fourscore thousand men. To make wars with small forces in is no husbandry, but a waste, a disease, a lingering and painful consumption of men and money. The Romans, making their thick, made them, making theirs thick, made them short, and had little regard unto money. As that which they who have men enough can command, where it is fittest, that it is, that it should be levied. All the ancient monarchies by this means got on wing and attained unto vast riches. Whereas your modern princes, being dear purchasers of small parcels, have but empty pockets. But it may be that some will accuse the order of rashness in that it cut, committeth the sole conduct of the war unto the general and the custom of Venice by her pro providatory or checks upon her commanders in chief may seem to be of greater prudence. But in this part of our government neither Venice nor any nation that maketh use of mercenary forces is for our instruction. A mercenary man with a standing general is like a fatal sister that spins. But proper forces with an annual magistrate are like her that cuts the thread. Their interests are quite contrary, and yet you have a better provid providatory uh, with than the Venetian, another strategist sitting with an army standing by him, whereupon that which is marching, if there were any probability it should, would find a little possibility that it could recoil as a foreign enemy to invade you. These things considered, a war will appear to be of a contrary nature, into, unto that of all other reckonings, inasmuch as of this you must never look to have a good account of you be strict in, in imposing checks. Let a council of huntsmen assembled beforehand tell you which way to the stag shall run, where you shall cast about at the fault, and how you shall ride to be in at the, the chase all the day. But these may as well do that as a council of war directed general. The hours that, were, that have painted wings and of different colors are his counsel. He must be like the eye that maketh not the scene, but hath it so soon as it changes. 
that in many counselors there is strength is spoken of civil administrations as to those that are military there is nothing more certain than that in many counselors there is weakness joint commissioners in military affairs are like hunting your hounds in their couples in the attic war cleonomy uh, Cle Cleomenes and Demaratus, kings of Lacedaemon, being thus coupled, tugged one against another, and while they should have joined against the Persian, were the cause of the calamity, whereupon that commonwealth took better counsel, and made a law whereby from thenceforth there went at once but one of her kings unto battle. The Fidenati, being in rebellion and having slain the colony of the Romans, four tribunes with consular power were created by the people of Rome, whereof one being left for the guard of the city, the other three were sent against the Fidenati, were who, through the division that happened among them, brought nothing home but dishonor, whereupon the Romans created the dictator, and Livy gives his judgment in these words, Tres tribuni potestate consulare. Documentaro, uh, documento fuere, uh, quam plurimum, plurimum, plurimum imperium bello inutile. Esset ten, den, tendendo ad sua quisque concilia cum alia aliud vider tur uh, aperuerunt ad occasionem locum hosti when the consuls uh, Quinctius and Agrippa were sent against the Echi Agrippa was, uh, for his, this reason, refused to go forth with his colleague, saying, Saluberimum in administratione magnarum rerum sumum imperii apud un, unum esse. In, and if the ruin of modern armies were well considered, most of it would be found to have fallen upon this point, it being in this case so far safer to trust unto any one man of common prudence than to any two or more together of the greatest parts, the consuls indeed being equal in power, while one was present in the senate and the other in the field with the army made a good balance, and this with us is exactly followed by the election of a new strategus upon the march of the old one. The seven and twentieth order, whereby the elders, in case of invasion, and are obliged unto equal duty with the youth, and each upon their own charge, is suitable unto reason, for every man defends his own estate. <clears throat> and unto our copy as in the war with the Samnites and Tuscans. Senatus justitium indici uh, delectum omnis generis uh, homnium haberi usit nec ingenui modo et juniores sacro, sacramento adactisunt sed senorium etiam cohortes facte. This nation of all others is the least obnoxious unto invasion. Oceana, saith a French politician, is a beast that cannot be devoured but by herself. Nevertheless, that, document, that government is not perfect, which is not provided at all points. And in this ad triaro, triarios, res rediit, the elders being such as in a martial state must be veterans, the commonwealth invaded gap, gathers strength like Antaeus by her fall, whilst 
the whole number of the elders consisting of five hundred thousand and the youth of as many being brought up according unto the elders give twelve successive battles each battle consisting of eight thousand men half elders and half youth and the commonwealth whose constitution can be no stranger unto any of these virtues which are to be acquainted uh, be acquired in human life grows familiar with death ere she die if the hand of god be upon her for her transgressions she shall mourn for her sins and lie in the dust for her iniquities without losing of her manhood si fractus illibatur orbis impavidam perient ruine the remaining part being the constitution of this provincial orb is partly civil or consisting of the elders and partly military or consisting of the youth.